so yesterday I came up here and I welcomed uh, gen genomic medicine friends and family. So this is the um, genomic medicine diehards, the last, the group, the last group remaining or standing. Uh, so we've uh, we've introduced this topic at the last at GM4, and um, I guess I have the slides here that we we really want to uh, begin to engage the international community in what we've been doing here in genomic medicine in the U.S. and um, Okay, sorry. Well, um, anyway, um, so uh, why are we doing this? Um, we're thinking about an international uh, meeting. It's not obvious that we're, we're not insular. This is a global topic. Um, uh, I call them hubs. These are technology centers that have sprung up uh, across almost every continent across the globe to help um, enable genomic science to be done, but also to enable genomic medicine to be done, and genome sequencing is, of course, happening on human genomes across the globe, uh, and there really isn't a, uh, a forum uh, of, of sorts that will uh, really enable a global, a dialogue of the global, on a global scale of the many of the issues that we've covered, not just in, in this conference uh, or in this set workshop uh, uh, this week, but also in our prior one. So, uh, and I also feel, uh, and I, maybe this is not, maybe this is just me, that we have an opportunity to step into a leadership role and as opposed to a potential uh, watch or follow role, uh, echoing uh, some of what Dr. Sessions said yesterday about the kinds of viewpoints you could have on this, but we could lead and advance this uh, as, as a, a global agenda, not just for genomic medicine, but clearly one of the topics that would be important to include in this is glo global health. So um, I'm just going to, I'm going to be very quick. Oh, we've discussed these uh, yesterday, and also Dan just talked about the uh, uh, European Science Foundation, that there are clearly uh, groups that are countries and nations that are making investments in implementation outcomes research and enabling genomic medicine to be applied to healthcare in Canada across uh, several uh, European sites. Um, we, we heard about the UK strategy yesterday. Uh, we didn't mention this this time, but um, Israel is one of the uh, is trying to take a leadership role in the Middle East, um, and has uh, had a series of meetings to develop um, a strategy that will be presented to their Ministry of Health. Uh, Israel is an interesting place because uh, its entire healthcare system is managed by four uh, HMOs, um, and, and and includes uh, a, a number of nationalities um, uh, uh, f from the region, uh, and the and the World Economic Forum that I just wanted to uh, give you a brief update on. So I'm going to skip over these slides because you've seen this. But um, uh, the World Economic Forum uh, initiated a, a new global agenda council or committee on personalized and precision health that was started last year. Uh, it doesn't have the broadest representation in the world. Um, you can see the five or six uh, countries uh, that are represented in its current membership. Uh, but um, uh, earlier this year, um, funds and resources were approved to address three issues. Uh, from the WEF that will be presented um, in part in Davos in 2014. One is a, a position paper on how personalized medicine and genomic medicine can address uh, some areas of the global, global burden of disease, um, and that's a uh, uh, um, uh, work that's being led by Dana Goldman at UCSF. Uh, the second is uh, to uh, get into the big data space and uh, think about um, uh, how big data can accelerate the science globally uh, and also to participate in some form yet to be decided on uh, the concepts of data sharing. Um, and uh, the, uh, this particular, the World Economic Forum has dedicated a, um, a consultant, uh, A.T. Kearney, uh, which is like a McKinsey group, uh, to help really define the business proposition for uh, data sharing. Um, and. Um, and interoperability of databases, which has been something we've talked about here um, uh, and various other forums. Uh, and lastly, um, uh, best practices and regulatory and reimbursement strategies for implementation of uh, personalized and precision health. And this is an initiative that will be uh, led by uh, Peggy Hamburg from, uh, from the FDA. Uh, so we'll see uh, some movement at this, uh, I think, important um, global platform for this. And I think it, it reflects, again, the the, the timing of what we're talking about and bringing together a global community to, uh, to really think about some of the genomic me medicine implementation initiatives that we've uh, uh, discussed uh, today and, and yesterday. So I, I don't have names, but these are some of the um, uh, geographic regions and countries that we've 
thought about inviting uh, leaders from. Um, I think this is going to be, this is sort of a last plug to this group to help us identify uh, thought leaders and particularly individuals that are leading efforts to truly implement genomics and genomic medicines in various regions of the world. I, I certainly don't think that our working group is encyclopedic on this subject, so I'd encourage you to uh, send me or Terry a message over the next few days because our timing to get out invitations is becoming um, critical um, of individuals that you think will, would um, make a significant contribution. We're hoping to invite somewhere between 15 and 20. I don't, I think there's uh, obviously some budget considerations, but 15 to 20 international participants and the kinds of people we're thinking about are both individuals that are uh, sort of in, the, in government positions that can make um, policy decisions about funding as well as or in addition to uh, scientific leaders that are really leading the charge on genomic medicine implementation in some of these areas. So that's a, a call to action, if you will, for, uh, from this group. Um, we've, uh, we've talked about some of what we might, might try to accomplish um, at this meeting, um, echoing some of what we did in our first meeting, GM1, with the U.S. community, I think, really trying to think about what are some of the uh, common barriers, synergies and, re synergies and redundancies that we might um, um, uh, illuminate um, by bringing these groups together, and importantly, can we then use that and channel that, um, that information into identifying uh, um, possibilities for collaboration uh, and, um, and maybe more effective uh, implementation of genomic medicine projects. Um, I think uh, policy has got to be part of this uh, discussion as well, as um, there are myriad um, 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 political as well as cultural environments that genomic medicine might be being deployed into, and it's, it's worth uh, understanding uh, what that diversity looks like and what some of the common policy and maybe diverse policy agendas uh, might be. Uh, interestingly, as we've talked about, we have, a, we have a fragmented healthcare system in the U.S., but there are other places where it might be um, much more feasible to do some of what we're, we're aspiring to do here, um, such as um, uh, collaborating with uh, places like Canada and the U.K. that have single-payer systems or uh, city-states like Singapore where it might be more attractive to, uh, to collaborate to if, if the goal is truly to um, generate evidence and uh, proof of principle that uh, genetics and genomics can make a difference um, both at the, at the uh, patient, provider, and the health system level. Um, as, um, um, as, uh, as Dan illustrated in, you know, with what some of the uh, European Science Foundation as well as the Canadian system is doing, I think we can explore maybe some of the lessons learned and best practices about engaging in public-private partnerships that would be enabling. Uh, and I, I put in here also a goal to uh, think about some of the economic analyses that we could, uh, or economic data that we could capture to generate some of the economic um, arguments for, um, for genomic medicine uh, as, a, uh, as a strategy. So some of the possible outcomes that we might have from a meeting like this is um, a, 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 a more of an international convening organization, pilot projects, uh, standards as we've talked about here, um, um, can these be achieved globally? Uh, the, the, again, from what Dan said from the uh, European Science Foundation's uh, meeting, it's, it sounds like that's going to be a significant challenge with the alphabet soup and a number of uh, different, thing, different, thing, different types of IT and EMR systems, but it's something that we can at least address. And certainly uh, uh, education should be, and workforce planning, um, which is a global challenge, I think, which should be on our agenda. Uh, so. Um, we aspire to um, seek information ahead of the meeting from uh, any, all the participants to help us really uh, maybe fill out this matrix in, in greater detail so we have a, a landscape analysis of, of what, the, what the world is doing in, the, in this arena. Uh, and we'll use that, I'm sure, to help us uh, drive um, the agenda and discussion topics for the meeting. Um, it will be here um, uh, in Washington, uh, most likely, I think, in September. Um, the date will be finalized very shortly. Um, and I think that is all I have to say. Oh, actually, one other thing I wanted to say, which um, is that uh, just as a reflection of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of this topic, again, is that um, uh, and this is a bit of an advertisement and a bit of a data point, is that um, uh, there's a Keystone meeting uh, later uh, in June uh, in Stockholm, Sweden, on human genomics and personalized medicine that, that I'm co-chairing with Kelly Frazier from, UC, uh, from UCSD, and I think, first of all, that key, this is one of the first Keystone meetings that I'm aware of that actually 
is on uh, genomic and personalized medicine. I may be wrong about that, but it is one of the first. And that it's being held in Europe, I think, is partly because a lot of the supporting foundations and industry groups that want to see this meeting take place are actually of European origin, and, and uh, they wanted to have the meeting uh, in, a, in an accessible location um, uh, for European uh, investigators and attendees. And there are greater than 30 countries that are attending this meeting. There's over 250 registered attendees. Uh, so I think that's, again, a reflection of, of where um, uh, you know, some of the interest is uh, in terms of the global community in this field. So again, um, if you'd like to attend that meeting, I think there's still time to register. A number of people in the room are actually speaking at it, but there's also a, quite a nice balance of uh, United States and uh, non-US um, uh, presenters at the meeting. So with that, I'll open this up for any questions, comments, or discussion. Les. Yes, Les. Who is um, representing the U.S. at that global um, action, what, the, the World Economic Forum? Oh, it's uh, actually the U.S. has a quite a, uh, a large footprint on, on that committee. Uh, Francis Collins, Margaret Hamburg, uh, to name two. Victor Zhao is the, uh, from Duke is the chair. I'm on this uh, committee, I, I think, uh, to help Victor. Uh, and um, uh, there's uh, Charles Sawyers. Um, uh, Roger Chen, um, I'm blanking on a few other names, but you can find the list uh, of U.S. Uh, representatives on the, on the World Economic Forum's uh, website. Great. Other comments for, for Jeff? All right. So we look forward to your uh, input on possible attendees, but also, uh, you know, as we plan this meeting, um, it, the, the questions and topics are cer certainly open uh, right now, and certainly we'd appreciate your input. So, like I said, email uh, a message to either myself or Terry, and we'll uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll thank your contribution. We'll thank you for your contribution to the meeting. Great. All right. I think at this point we have we have made it. As Jeff said, we're the we're the diehards. I, I do want to take a, a moment to thank Mike Heathcote, who did a fabulous job arranging this meeting and and keeping us all so so. Here and, uh, and we'll uh, keep you apprised of uh, plans for the, for the next meeting and um, I look forward to seeing you then. So thanks a lot.